why did Stalin seek to transform the USSR economically, and how successful was he? We have two questions here, and they're both very important. The answers help you understand both the rise of the USSR to the status of a superpower and the sources of its ultimate collapse in 1991. They help you understand both the rise and the fall of the Soviet Union. So let's start with the first question. Why did Stalin seek to transform the USSR economically? We need to make one thing clear from the very start. All Soviet leaders agreed on the need to transform the USSR economically. They all wanted to build a communist society, and they all agreed that this would be impossible unless the Soviet Union came to be more advanced than the most advanced capitalist society was at the time. Indeed, this was what made them Bolsheviks. To understand this, you need a bit of background, and you need to understand the way that Marxists think. Back in the 19th century, the German philosopher Karl Marx developed a theory of history historical materialism. His theory postulated that the structure of the economy determined the structure of the political system. So, for example, he argued that the gradual development of capitalism in the 18th and 19th centuries created a new force, the bourgeoisie, a force that overcame the power of the feudal state, the power of the monarch and the aristocrats. He saw that the development of capitalism was bringing colossal economic development, the Industrial Revolution. But he believed that the internal logic of capitalism meant that the technology and wealth capitalism generated would necessarily be concentrated in the hands of a small group, exploiting the labor of an ever poorer working class. In time, the working class, he believed, would rise up against their exploiters and lead a proletarian revolution and create a communist society. Now, this is all a bit tricky, but all you need to remember is that Marx believed that communism emerged inevitably from the furthest development of capitalism. He assumed, on this basis, that communist revolution would occur in the states where capitalism was most developed, in Germany or in Britain, for example. At the turn of the 20th century, Russia was still extremely backward. Capitalism was only just taking root. The Russian economy was based largely on a very primitive agriculture rather than industry. So how did the Russian revolutionary Marxists relate to this? Well, they argued about what to do. And in 1903, they split into the Mensheviks, literally those in the minority, and the Bolsheviks, those in the majority. Now, the Mensheviks were the orthodox Marxists. They wanted to overthrow the Russian autocracy, but only because they believed it was an obstacle to the development of capitalism. So they wanted to accelerate the development of capitalism in Russia. The Bolsheviks, the party of Lenin and Stalin, were less patient. They believed that it was possible to take control of the government and use the power this would give them to skip the stage of capitalism. This was radically contrary to Marx, who, remember, said the structure of the economy determined the structure of the political system. The Bolsheviks thought that they could use the political system to shape the economy. And yet, like Marx, they believed that communism could not be achieved without establishing a technologically advanced industrial economy. So to return to the question, all Bolsheviks, and not just Stalin, sought to transform the USSR economically. They all agreed that communism could not be achieved without overcoming Russian backwardness. What they couldn't agree on was just how that transformation should take place. And they argued about it constantly for a dozen years after the revolution. So let me now turn your attention to that debate. In the first couple of years after the revolution, the debate was rather subdued. Subdued because the regime was focused on surviving the civil war. And yet one can see the outlines of an approach to overcoming backwardness in this period. All private enterprise was nationalized. 
and efforts were made to develop a national economic plan that would take the place of the forces of supply and demand in a capitalist economy. Soviet leaders also began to plan for the collectivization of agriculture, a plan which would have led to the nationalization of all the peasants' land, livestock, and equipment, and the introduction of large-scale farming with modern equipment. In fact, the regime didn't get far with any of these plans because of the war. The regime survived not by realizing grand plans for the communist future, but rather by forcing workers to spend long hours at the factory for little pay, and by seizing grain from the peasants. By 1920, it was clear that they would win the war. But by then, the economy was in ruins, working at 5% or so of its pre-war capacity. The working class had disappeared into the countryside in search of food. The peasantry was on the verge of rebellion, and the army was beginning to mutiny. Something had to be done. 